with five seconds. He's going to throw it. Howard leaps. He has it. Touchdown, Carolina. Back from the dead to tie the game with two seconds to go. Snap back, spot down. The kick is cleanly away. It is good. And it's Waller <laughs> with yes, a sir. 54 yard field goal. And how about them Tar Heels? They do it. Here's Kupak. Gives off to Amos. He's good. 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 Jordan back to kick, it's blocked again, picked up! It'll be a touchdown, Carolina, for Bracey Walker! He blocks his second punt and scores his second touchdown of the season. It's 14 to 13. Mr. Jordan beat Mr. Walker. Bernard fields it at the 26, heading to the far side. Gio at the 35. Gio, he's at the 50. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Gio, he's going to take it for a touchdown. This is the Heel Tough Blog Podcast on Spreaker.com. We welcome in from the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. It is Richard Davenport. And uh, Mr. Davenport, uh, we'll start just, uh, you know, by asking you, you know, Jacoby Criswell, a guy that commits to Carolina and immediately is a guy that jumps in and starts trying to help Carolina recruit some of the other guys that they're going to add to the 2020 class. So um, he's a guy that seems to have a a really high energy level. And, uh, you know, this could be something big for Carolina that, you know, it, it on and off the football field. Well, he's a good kid, number one, and uh, it doesn't surprise me. He's a leader. He, he's a he's got a very uh, a very good head on his shoulders. Uh, just comes across very well, and uh, he's a very humble kid and a guy that I can see people gravitate towards. And uh, obviously, if you're the quarterback of a class, uh, you know that's that's important because you. you you're looked upon as a leader, and he's got that uh, that leadership capability. And uh, I think uh, I think North Carolina did very well in getting him. One of the immediate concerns that I know a lot of people are going to have is the knee injury that he suffered early last year. Now, he did come back and play the final five games of the season and really did look pretty good, um, leading Moralton to four out of five wins in the final five games of the season. So, you know, that is that injury, that's not something that should concern anybody from your perspective, right? You know, I, I have not seen him uh, since he got the injury uh, and since he rehabbed, but everything that I heard, it was uh, the rehab went very well, went uh, uh, probably ahead of schedule. And uh, he, I haven't heard anything that would, if, if uh, you know, would concern me if I was a Carolina fan. I, you know, the injuries nowadays, it's obviously it's a serious injury but it's nothing like it was 20 30 years ago so uh, I tend to think that uh, he'll be he'll be good to go so when I watched his tape you know there are a lot of people that are comparing the other quarterback that the Tar Heels have in the class Malik Hornsby to Vince Young but watching how Jacoby plays a little bit of a bigger bodied guy that does have the ability to run, but not quite a guy that's going to blow you away with the speed, more of a technical runner, but has the arm strength and everything like that. He kind of reminded me a little bit of Vince Young in that sense. You know, is that kind of what you see him as a guy that is going to be able to run the football, but really is going to look to be a fast, uh, a pass first quarterback? Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, he's get, probably got one of the strongest arms I've seen. Uh, arm strength, uh, he, his arm strength's uh, upper tier in uh, all the high school football, if you ask me. Uh, I don't think that you're going to find too many arms uh, stronger than Jacoby's. Then uh, he's extremely accurate, too. Uh, and he's, he's, he's got a good football IQ. He's trained under Clint Sterner. Who uh, Clint Sterner was a quarterback uh, for Arkansas back in the uh, late uh, 1990s and went on to play uh, for the Dallas Cowboys for a couple of seasons. And uh, Clint is very, very high on Jacoby. And he, he's a guy that uh, I think, uh, looking back, I think, uh, I think this could be one of those uh, 
one of those kids at quarterback that turns out to be very, very good for uh, North Carolina. So, you know, just looking at what you've seen from him in the past few seasons, do you think that he's a guy that is going to be able to come in and potentially make a little bit of noise at the quarterback position? Or do you think that it would probably serve him best to spend a little bit of time behind maybe some of the more senior guys and develop a little bit? I, I think that towards just about every freshman quarterback. I think there's very few freshman quarterback quarterbacks ready to play at a high power five level. Uh, there are a few exceptions, but uh, oftentimes those guys are, uh, you know, go, uh, with programs like Alabama or you know, an upper tier type program that it, it, it doesn't. They don't have to do as much. Uh, for, for a program like that to uh, say uh, North Carolina or, or some of the other programs I, I, I tend to think it'd be obviously a good 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 deal for him to sit for a year and uh, you know develop and learn the offense and, and learn the college game but uh, I think in a couple of years uh, I think that uh, he, he, he can definitely make some noise. Talking to Richard Davenport of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. You know, I wanted to ask you, I've asked a lot of journalists this really over the past couple of days. You know, when you look at the effect that Mac Brown is having in that area of the country, I know that he was recruiting in that area of the country when he was back at Texas. It seems like now, you know, he is starting to head back into that area of the country. But I wanted to ask you, do you think that a guy like Tim Brewster, who was at Texas A&M, do you think that he played a, a big role in Jacoby's commitment? And, and is that a guy that, you know, being in the state of Arkansas and being around some of these high school guys, you've heard a lot? I'll be honest with you, no, I haven't. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that that, that wasn't a, a big deciding factor in Jacoby's uh, recruitment. I, I honestly I didn't really talk to him much about North Carolina. Mm-hmm. I just know that uh, they were definitely one of the schools that he was taking a serious look at. But uh, obviously, with with, with uh, ties to this this part of the country, it kind of helps. I mean, uh, I'm not saying that's a deciding factor or anything like that. And then obviously, when you get the head coach and his coach to quarterback like Vince Young, you, you can definitely sell that too. But uh, uh, I, I don't know a lot of what you know what what directly went into his decision. So the last question that I'll ask you, and then we'll get you out of here. You know, I, I look at Jacoby, and you know, it seems like he really is easily the best player on his team. Can you tell me a little bit about what you think that that team will be able to do this year with him at the helm? Like, are they a team that is a threat to win a state title because of just how good Jacoby is, or is this a team where you know there might just not be enough there for them to take home a state title in his senior year? Uh, you know, when you got a quarterback of that caliber, I mean, uh, that he, he obviously kind of helps you in some areas that uh, maybe if you were uh, weak in, you know, he can uh, help compensate uh, because of his talent and, uh, and his leadership and his ability. But uh, Morrillton traditionally uh, always has a good football team, and, and having uh, one of the better quarterbacks in the country doesn't hurt, that's for sure. All right, so uh, yeah, we're we're looking forward to some great things from Jacoby coming up down the line. Of course, we got to wait till the 2020 season. But uh, Richard, I want to thank you for stopping by and talking to us because uh, you've you've given us some encouraging things to hear about him, and uh, I think everybody's really really eager to see how everything turns out at a quarterback position that suddenly for the Tar Heels is very loaded for the 2020 season. So um, if they want to keep up with everything that's going on uh, around the Arkansas, the area that you guys cover, and maybe a little bit on Jacoby. Uh, where can they follow you on Twitter, and uh, as well as some of the sports coverage that you guys do at the Arkansas Democrat Gazette? Uh, you can follow me. Follow me at AR Recruiting Guy. That's AR Recruiting Guy, and then uh, Ohawk Sports is our website, along with, uh, as you said, uh, the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. You can Google all that and find out more. All right, Richard. Hey, thank you very much. And uh, we'll maybe we'll talk to you down the line a little more about Jacoby, especially if he does make a deep run into the state playoffs and potentially towards the state championship.
Sounds good, Anthony. Take care. All righty. So that is Richard Davenport of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette telling us a little bit about the Tar Heels' most recent quarterback commit, Jacoby Criswell, the three-star dual-threat quarterback from Moralton High School in Moralton, Arkansas. Now, he is not the most recent 2020 commit for the Tar Heels. That is three-star strong side defensive end A.J. Beattie, who committed today after his official visit to campus. Two other major targets were on campus this weekend. Timothy Lawson, the offensive tackle from Fort Washington, Maryland, has actually vaulted Carolina towards the top of his list. I think at this moment, many believe that the Tar Heels are now the favorite to land his recruitment after this weekend. And Antoine Powell was also on campus, the four-star weak side defensive end from IC Norcom High School in in Portsmouth, Virginia. So keep an eye on those guys down the line as both of them really seem to have enjoyed their visits on campus this weekend. Another guy that did commit was was the transfer cornerback Bryce Watts, who was on campus this weekend for an official visit. The Virginia Tech transfer announced that he was transferring back on May 31st, and the Tar Heels made quick work, landing him in just over a week's time. So a great job by the staff. It looks like Dre Bly had a great connection with him uh, immediately once he got on campus. So You cannot say enough about what this staff has done with the 2020 class and with the guys that they've gotten on the uh, in the transfer portal. Um, So Carolina is just doing a fantastic job, and everything seems to be moving in the right direction. Now, again, this is part of our series where we are trying to help you guys here at the Heel Tough Blog Podcast. Get more familiar with some of the guys that are in the 2020 class. So you can go back and listen to some of the other great article or, or uh, some of the other great episodes. Excuse me, I got the articles on my mind with everything that's been going on. Some of the other great episodes that we have put out over the past couple of days. The Houston Chronicles. Adam Coleman stopped by to talk about Malik Hornsby. We've got Langston Works Jr. on the Charlotte area commits, and then the Atlanta Journal Constitution's Todd Holcomb on the Atlanta area commits. Also. So he is from Georgia High School Football Daily uh, Newsletter. He also puts that out each week. So a shout out to Todd for stopping by. And of course, Richard Davenport, who you guys heard here tonight. Great job breaking down what we're going to get from the quarterback, Jacoby Criswell. So once again, want to thank Richard for stopping by. want to thank you guys for listening. And as always, go Tar Heels! Go Tar Heels!